So this is an example of a goods producing company uh, producing beverages and uh, uh, they have a production plan and basically as you can see here let me scroll down a little bit their plan is to produce 2200 units uh, every month january february and so forth and maybe to highlight where i am looking at let me use this coloring okay so the ending inventory before january is 1000 uh, and they are going to produce 2200 units per month uh, and then uh, the demand that they they, they, are, they have forecasted so they basically their john or mary whoever is doing the forecasting has this forecast for different months in future uh, cumulative demand uh, they are expecting to be this because the demand they are expecting to be this so let me highlight the demand these are the demands okay so they have some inventory on hand they expect that the demand is 1500 in january but there would be a demand in three of 3000 in august now this company and every company any production of goods company they have this question that should we have a flat production rate or we have to have varying production rate. Now I want you to tell me what kind of company would choose to have a flat production rate and what kind of company would choose a different method, which is called Chase. This, if you click on the other tab, maybe I change the color of the tab so I can refer to it. Uh, like I make this one red, okay. Red is Chase, okay. So in Chase strategy, every month they will have a different production level. In level strategy, they will have a flat production level all the time. Now, my question for you is that what kind of company will choose flat strategy? Probably companies that don't make perishables or things that become obsolete quickly. Very good. They should be able to put it in the warehouse, okay, not perishable goods. There is another parameter here other than the nature of the good. Did you did you hear me say obsolescence as well? Um, yeah, like that's another version of perishability. Okay. But other than the fact is, you know, the product can get obsolete or can be spoiled. There is another parameter. Oh, like if the demand is seasonal or it fluctuates a lot depending on... Yeah. In this case, it is fluctuating. You see, it is actually fluctuating. 1500 2600 but it's still there are companies that even with this varying demand they may decide to go for flat production level production they would have the same level of production all the time uh, also uh, we can also word it in a different way like for the company it is not easy to change the capacity of their production you know if you are buying a heavy machinery for your production level, then it's not easy for you to change your machinery such that instead of 2,200 units of car, you will produce 3,000 cars. You know, like in case of production of barrels of beverages, we may have flexibility, but not every company has this flexibility. The other thing that can happen if you want to change your production rate is over time and under time. Now, if you if you want people to uh, to change their level of production then uh, you have to ask them you know if you if you have a capacity of 2200 but you don't want to produce 2200 units because demand is not enough then you have some under time cost under time cost is that you are paying your employees but they are not working or even if you fire them you are still paying for rent while your company is not working or the cost of machinery which are not working so there is an undertime cost uh, for some companies um, you know for example um, in services if you have a unionized environment you cannot easily reduce the number of people and increase the number of people as you wish you cannot say oh people go home uh, as you know people who are in 
uh, non-unionized, you know, if you're working in a non-unionized uh, restaurant, they may tell you, okay, we don't need you anymore tomorrow, goodbye. Okay, so I just want you to know that there are situations that the demand like this are varying a lot, but the production um, is not going to uh, easily change. So we are going to do some analysis for this company, what is the best level, because they will buy their machinery according to the level that we are suggesting, okay? So right now, the level strategy is 2,200, but the level strategy can easily be 2,100. Now, when you uh, open the spreadsheet, just click on normal production rate, and you can see that we can have different 2,300 normal production rates. And of course, if you choose a different normal production rate, then your inventory levels will be different and everything will be, you know, how much inventory you will have at the end of every month changes. So you are going to Germany. Not that, I don't know if our German uh, friend is still with us or has yes. left. Oh, you are here? Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> okay. We always go to get the best machinery from Germany, okay? So we go there and we want to decide what is the capacity that is best for this company if they want to follow this flat strategy, okay? And that depends on how much is the cost of warehousing for us. Look at this. If I change this to 2,500, Let's see what happens. If I increase my capacity, then there is no cost of lost opportunity because every month I'm producing 2,500 and they are, I'm putting it in the warehouse. The, a little bit is being consumed and ending inventory. Look at this column. This is every month I have thousands of units of the product in the warehouse and it never gets uh, you know there is no customer there is no customer that comes to my store uh, or to my factory that i cannot sell to them however if i choose a production rate of 2000 then yeah in some of the months of the year i have some inventory on hand and the disaster also happens it's like these two two months july and august are disastrous months because there are people who want to buy 1,100 units and I cannot sell them because we don't have inventory on hand. Uh, I'm producing 2,000 units in July and the demand is 3,200. Uh, so basically I have lost of, cost of lost opportunity. And in class we already discussed why uh, this lost opportunity as the result of not having enough inventory is so bad. So, uh, but look at this, if I choose to go to high production rate, yes, we don't have cost of loss opportunity, but because we always have end inventory, then there is some inventory cost for us. Okay, so this inventory cost in months of January is the result of the fact I have inventory at the end of the month in my warehouse. Let me show you why, okay. Do you see the screen, all of the arrows and everything? Maybe not. Let me make it a little smaller. Yeah, so here, at the, um, in, at the end of January, we had 1,000 units at the beginning of the month. We produced 2,500 units because I made my uh, flat rate, level rate as 2,500. So the total product availability was 3,500. The demand is 1,500. Therefore, 2,000 units are in the warehouse. The holding cost is $1.4. Therefore, I am accepting the holding cost of 2,800. I wanted to show you that if I, if I have a very big level rate, then I will have a lot of inventory on hand. And you know, to produce those goods, I have a production cost of 2,100,000. And I have an inventory cost that is that I'm now accepting. So my total cost would be the summation of these two. Uh, so my total cost of production 
and holding cost combined is this much. How much money we are making here? So let's say I would write here the sales price is uh, production uh, plus that would be 160. So it seems that this company is selling at 160 and the production cost is uh, 70. Therefore, the cost of lost sales is 90, approximately. I'm just making it up, okay? So if we want to find out how much is the total profit that they are making as the result of this uh, level 2500, we have to find out that how much they will sell and how much is their cost. So how much would be their total sales in your opinion? I want to find out their total sales. What should I do? Sum of, uh, it's just the cumulative demand in December? times exactly so so let's find out let's uh, you can sum all of this demand which is here or you can sum it yourself this is always cumulative demand is sum of the all of the demands just let me show you sum <laughs> do it oh because it is yeah. locked yes okay so this is my total or we can use this one. But notice that if I change this uh, to 2000, um, this total doesn't change, but I have some lost sales. So if my, my production is less than some threshold, then I'm not going to be able to satisfy all of this demand. So my actual sales, maybe I write it here, actual. will be my, I have to find out some of my loss sales. We have to find out what is the total possible loss sales in cases that it happens. So we find some of the loss sales and then our actual sales, and maybe I write it here, would be my total demand minus those times that lost sales happen. Okay, so this is my actual sales. And if my sales price is as $160, then my revenue would be how much? My revenue would be this total sales multiplied by my selling price this is big number okay and now my profit will be my revenue minus sorry will be my revenue minus 27 minus I have to subtract because we are considering the cost of lost sales in our calculations already. So we subtract from uh, the total production cost and we will subtract the inventory cost. Our goal is to maximize the profit, but look at our profit. If I produce 2,000 units, it is 2,100. 2, if I produce 2,000 100 units flat rate, 2,181. If I produce two, 200 flat rate, two, it goes up uh, to 222, 2, 2, 2, If I produce 2,300, then it goes down. If I produce 2,400, then it goes down. So there is a maximum uh, profit. It depends on how much I produce because 
If I produce too much, then I will have inventory cost. If I produce too little, then I will have cost of lost opportunity. So we have to find out the maximum. Do you have any idea how many different possible production rates are there? Infinite. Exactly. So what should we do? Solar. Lovely. Very good. So I am clicking on solver. Uh, I have to change my sharing method first. So I stop the sharing. I share my full screen. Now we want this time we want to maximize. Mm -hmm. So I click on my solver. And our goal in this case is to maximize. What do we want to maximize? Profit. Profit, exactly. So I want to maximize cell K28. And what is the parameter that I want to change production. to maximize? Exactly, the normal production rate. So I want to the Excel to go through all possible details to maximize K28. Nice. So I click on solve and I wanted to keep it. It turns out that the best production rate for us is 2262. Please do it and make sure that you can find this optimum production rate. So basically, this is the planning that we are talking about in this chapter. We if now we know what we have to do when we go to Germany, we will go and we will buy machinery that are suitable for 2262 units, something that is close to this amount of production. We don't want to produce 10 million or 10, you know, 1000 units. We want to produce a flat rate of 2262 is the best for us. Okay, so now, so we found out that if this company follows the, the level of strategy, with a level of strategy of 2,262, they will get the best result. Now let's go to the chase strategy, because also in this specific case, in the case of uh, the golden beverages, they have the opportunity to easily them to do overtime, under time. So uh, for them, uh, the the total cost of following the chase strategy is that like basically the only thing that is here is that in January, the only novel thing here is that because they have 1,000 inventory units, maybe I highlighted in before the start of the work. They have 1,000 units. Therefore, in January, they just produce 500 units. For every other month, they just produce what is the demand. Just maybe look at this, demand and production. So basically, every month, they produce what is demand. And let's assume that they can produce based on the demand. They just ask their employees to work overtime, under time. And then, uh, uh, with the machinery with the capacity of 2200 the overtime under time that they have to go through will have some cost for them and the total cost of the company considering the overtime and under time costs and change of rate costs 1,835,000 so now let's calculate the profitability of chase strategy notice that this chase strategy is equivalent of zero inventory management so just in time management just in time management says that you you buy or you produce as needed so you don't have any inventory let's compare this with this look at this even in its optimum form we always have some inventory on hand in the level strategy in the chase strategy you never have any inventory on hand but you have other costs cost of change rate, cost of calibration of your machines, which is rate change cost, under, under time cost, overtime costs, and so forth. So 
with this strategy, they will satisfy all of the demand. Right? So the total revenue will be the total demand, which all of it will be satisfied because you're chasing it. That's why it is called chase, multiplied by 160, which was our sales price. So that is the total revenue. And the total, uh, there's no lost sales in the case of chase. And then the profit, their revenue, minus the revenue minus this cost of under time over time and everything so if they follow the chase strategy their profit would be two million three hundred forty and if they go for level strategy it would be two million two hundred forty four uh, so the chase strategy will win the the level strategy with a narrow margin. What do you have as your sales price for the chase strategy? I got it the same, one sixty. Amir, can I see your profit formula, please? Thank you. So now I want to show you something interesting. So in this case, the company is better to follow Chase strategy and pay all of this overtime under time. Now you ask me why do we use all of these parametric calculations? Now look at this. If the holding cost goes down, the inventory holding cost goes from $1.4 2.4 dollar. Let's see what happens. Then the profitability goes to two million two two hundred sixty-six thousand compared to two million three hundred forty. And if I it will change, so let me change this point four to point one as I am reducing the cost of inventory, and my profit will go up. The profitability of the uh, level strategy depends on the inventory cost. Look at this. I reduced my inventory cost, and I now go to chase a strategy. And let's say every time that they want to change the rate of production, it is not that cheap. Okay, I increase the the rate change cost. Now the profitability in this case is going down rate change cost of $20 per change and now the profitability is 223 and the profitability of level is 227 and in this case the, the level strategy is better okay so uh, you know each and every company in every situation depending to cost of production cost of holding cost of the goods that they are putting in the warehouse over time and under time cost, uh, one of the two uh, basically plans will work.